Hello and welcome to the Life Tools podcast. In school, we learned history and algebra, foreign languages and chemistry, but nobody taught us tools for life. How do we deal with self-doubt? What are beliefs and how do they influence us? How do we find ourselves when we feel lost? And how do we make a healthy decision? Many people learn these things much later in life, after three, four, even five decades of existence, and often the hard way. For a few, like myself, I had to learn them very early. I created this podcast to share with you the tools that have helped me greatly in my own life. They're small actions anybody can take that bring big results over time. Let's get to it. Hello everyone. This week's topic is something I touched on very briefly in episode 8 called What Am I Feeding My Mind? It was part of that particular week's exercise. In this episode, we are going to expand on this concept of our circle of control. It's a huge multi-layer topic and I could easily talk about this for three episodes. For now, we will look at it from a more general perspective. This one layer alone, if you practice and are consistent with it, will bring enormous benefits. Later, we can move on to the deeper levels. One of the greatest gifts from falling really ill and becoming semi-disabled from age 19 all the way to my late 20s is that I was forced to re-evaluate my life. It is why I say in my podcast intro that what most people learn in midlife or later, I had to learn really early. For example, I learned to get very clear on what was within my control and what was not, and to consequently devote my time and energy only to what was within my control. Why? Because putting my time and energy on things I wanted to control but actually had no control over was not only physically exhausting, but also a giant source of mental stress. And when you're sick, what normally is level 1 stress feels like level 10 stress. I have carried this practice with me and still apply it to this day. It's given me back tons of time and energy, and more importantly, saved me from a lot of mental turmoil. And I'm someone who is easily stressed and has an overthinking brain that self-generates stress. So that's saying something. If it helped me, it can help anyone. When something we perceive to be wrong or bad happens, we feel negative emotions. It's important first and foremost to recognize and process these emotions. They are valid. If someone did something, say, arrived 30 minutes late when they knew we were pressed for time, we likely would feel disrespected. Given our perception of the world, this is normal. But after we have processed our emotions, we are faced with a decision about what to do next. A lot of us, we complain, we criticize, we lament the situation. Or we become resigned and say, oh well, this is life, this will never change, might as well just accept it. Even though deep inside, the situation really does not feel okay for us. None of these reactions in and of itself is bad, except when they become a further source of stress. Remember, we were already stressed by the event, we don't want even more stress after. When we really pay attention to how we feel when we are complaining, when we say X shouldn't have done this, or Y is an idiot, and Z is unfair, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good because X, Y, and Z are who they are. We could criticize them every single day for a whole year, and likely, they'll still be behaving the same way. And if they do change, it won't be because we criticize them. When we complain, We are reinforcing how much we hate the situation and our feeling of being wronged and being powerless. This is a great source of psychological stress. Choosing to reduce this stress is kindness towards ourselves. We put a premium on being kind to others, but often forget that filling our own cups first is what allows us to have extra to give to others. So how exactly do we go about reducing this stress? by asking ourselves two questions. Number one, is this within my circle of control? Number two, what is within my circle of control? Let's walk through a few examples to understand this. In the above mentioned example, is this person coming on time within your control? No, you can remind him to come on time, but whether he actually comes on time is not within your control. So what is within your control? The limit you set is within your control. You can tell this person if he's late, you will wait 5 minutes or 10 minutes, but no more. Beyond 10 minutes, you leave. No drama, just clear boundaries. 
By focusing on what's within your control, you reduce your stress. This is kindness to yourself. Second example, your friend Justin called you fat and made fun of your belly creases. This floods you with shame. Is Justin and what Justin says within your circle of control? No, Justin is Justin. Most likely, you're not the only one he makes fun of. What is within your circle of control? You can control whether you choose to hang out with Justin in the future or not. You can control what you say in response to Justin. For example, Justin, I have nothing against you per se, but I am doing my best to have a healthy relationship with my body. If you have negative opinions about it, which you are entitled to, please keep them to yourself. By focusing on what's within your control, you reduce your stress. This is kindness to yourself. Third example. You host your friend Mary at your apartment for a week while she is at your city looking for a job. The whole time, she doesn't even offer to pay the groceries. You feel taken advantage of. Is Mary within your control? Clearly no. Mary is Mary. Maybe she's taking advantage of you or maybe she's just really broke right now and is thinking of paying you back some other way in the future. What is within your circle of control? You could talk to Mary about this. If this is a big concern and you yourself don't have a lot of extra cash to be feeding another person, then you have every reason to bring it up with her. And if she's really your friend, she would understand. Or you could talk to her not directly about the money, but her current situation. It will shed light on her behavior and maybe it will give you some peace of mind. You could also decide that this is the last time you will host Mary. The first two options are not the most comfortable but they're sure better than you fuming in your own head about the injustice of the situation. By focusing on what's within your control, you reduce your stress. This is kindness to yourself. Fourth example. You said something that Aunt Sarah took offense with. You didn't mean to hurt her, but you're also not someone who sugarcoats anything. You tend to say it like it is, and you were matter-of-fact, not accusatory. Is Aunt Sarah's interpretation of things within your control? No. Aunt Sarah, like everyone else, including you, interprets things according to their personality and personal history. What is within your circle of control? You can, if you want, apologize and explain to Aunt Sarah that you are sorry if she feels hurt, but you really didn't mean anything wrong with what you said. Is it within your control whether Aunt Sarah forgives you or not? No. So what is within your circle of control after you apologize? If she forgives you, great. If she doesn't, you can decide whether you are okay changing the way you talk when you are in front of Aunt Sarah. But if it feels too inauthentic to you and you're not okay with it, you could decide simply to hang out less with her. By focusing on what's within your control, you reduce your stress. This is kindness to yourself. Fifth example. You see an acquaintance raising their children in a way you think is wrong. Let's say, for example, they buy everything their kid wants and you think this is spoiling the child and a surefire way to raise him into an entitled brat. Are other parents and their way of raising their children within your control? No. They have their own beliefs about parenting, just as you have your own beliefs about parenting. So what is within your circle of control? How you choose to raise your children is within your control. Improving your parenting skills is within your control. Spending your time educating yourself about child development is within your control. By focusing on what's within your control, you reduce your stress. This is kindness to yourself. Last example. This is something that's happening to everyone right now, so you will be able to relate. COVID happens. Restaurants close. We're all cooped up at home, etc. Every day, or maybe I should say every single minute, COVID is on the news. Is COVID within your circle of control? No, at least not directly. So what is within your circle of control? The food you eat, the way you move your body, the information you choose to feed your mind with is within your control. The way you maintain human connection is within your control. The way you spend your time is within your control. By focusing on what's within your control, you reduce your stress. This is kindness to yourself. You get the picture. This week, as your homework, Pay attention to anything that causes you stress, particularly when you feel the urge to complain. Ask yourself, is this thing that's causing me stress within my circle of control? If yes, great. Take action. Do something about it. Changing an unpleasant habit, for example, is within your control. If the answer is no, then ask yourself the second question. 
what is within my circle of control. Try this, apply it consistently, and you will find that over time you will feel more and more peace in your life. And I speak from experience. I thought I had to change other people and my circumstances to feel peace. What I discovered is by changing the way I approach things, by changing where I put my time and energy, peace came naturally. That's it for this week. I heard from a friend a few days ago that she listens to every new episode and even re-listens to certain episodes multiple times. I was touched and really happy to hear this. If, like her, you appreciate the podcast, the best way to support it is to leave it a 5-star review and share it with your network. Screenshot the episodes you like or talk about what you learned, what you resonated with, what tools you are trying at the moment. It's the best way to get other people to discover the podcast. If you have any questions, you can reach me at lifetoolspodcast at gmail.com or simply follow the newly created Instagram handle at the Life Tools Podcast. I will be posting announcements and other helpful resources there, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. One last thing, I will be creating a series on this podcast specifically on childcare and parenting. Like these regular episodes, I will be sharing what I learned from my experience. If you have children in your life, whether you're a parent, a teacher, a sister, an aunt, you'll want to stay tuned for that. Thank you for listening and have a great week. Bye.